I'm holding in my hand probably the most popular lure in the world. I've learned that no matter where you travel, if you say Rapala, people know what you're talking about, that it's a lure. In this particular one that I'm holding, even the box is the commemorative packaging. This is the way they used to have the packaging back in the 60s. And this particular one was made just like the one that Lori Rapala hand carved, and then he used foil from a chocolate wrapper and put it on there. And that chocolate wrapping paper had little stars on it. So that was the old days. Today, when you look at this lure, it's so beautifully finished. And the one thing that it does well, it imitates a real minnow. In the swimming action, in the size, the way it floats, and the way it swims, and it catches a lot of fish. Now, I've learned over the years that one of the best ways to catch these long nose gar is to use these small Rapala lures. These particular ones are nine centimeters long. And if you ever look for the packaging, see right here, it has the number nine and the letter F. F means floating, and this is the original floating Rapala, and nine centimeters. And if you look on the side of the package, it actually tells you what the running depth is of the lure. So the best success that I've had for the gar is using the number 11 Rapala, and that's what I'm holding up here, two different colors, okay? And the reason I'm doing that, this one is the chrome one, and you see that it has the clear lip. The one that I have in my right hand is uh, like a green silver color, green back, and it's part of the bleeding lip series. That's because the little lip is not clear, it's red, and it comes equipped with red hooks. And in the case of the gar, I definitely think the red flashes, I don't know if it looks like blood or just eye-catching, they go for it. Because I was experimenting when I was pre-fishing down here on the Bay of Quinney for long nose gar with both colors, and the one with the bleeding lip produced more fish. Now the other tip I'm gonna give you if you're using a stick bait like a Rapala, some of the hooks are soft. Rapala uses high quality hooks, so these hooks won't come off, whether it's these uh, red ones or these that I've replaced. They're Gamogatsu hooks, and I'll show you the packaging here. Okay, so this is the package right here of the treble hooks. So these are extremely sharp hooks, and as you know, gar pike have a very bony snout. It's very hard to hook them. So one of the reasons why this particular size Rapala works well is because it has three little treble hooks and they seem to be just the right spacing apart in the right size that you're gonna get the gar pike most of the time with one of these little trebles. It's amazing. I'm amazed that those hooks even hold. <laughs> this guy, he's just one of the hooks from the back just in the tip of his snout. I'm trying to hold him up while I get my glove on. These are all mixed sizes. I haven't seen any real monsters. They seem to hang together. <clears throat> Even the little guys, though, I don't uh, take anything for granted. Look, one little hook just in the tip of the snout. So I'm gonna take that out. It's one of the smaller ones that are so cute. It's going to try to turn them. They've got so much power. I think when you put pressure on them, they're less likely to try to thrash or jump out of your hands. I've seen them jump and hit the boat. So they're just a gorgeous fish. I've been told, like that in Florida, for example, where there's a lot of gar like this, that the Seminole Indians, I believe it was the Seminoles down there, would harvest them for eating and they'd use a lasso. I don't know what kind of material, but on a long stick, and they'd actually let the gar swim through the lasso and then pull it tight. Because of their teeth and their long snout, they'd be able to land the fish. So I've never tried eating one of these. I imagine you can eat it. It's gonna get us out from the reeds a little bit. And I'm gonna put them in the water. Okay, this side. So this is a full-time job for one person. You'll see how fast it takes off here. Can I switch hands? Oh. It's like a snake. Okay, got him by the caudal peduncle and watch him take off here. There. <laughs> They're like a fighter jet, the way they go. Wow. You know, this has been nonstop action. Fisher Gotta have pink. Now ladies, watch the toads and the frogs. There's lots of wildlife down here. Now, you know, when it comes to picking, look at another one. When it comes to picking a good fishing spot, there's a few things you should look for. For example, you know, we walked up around this beautiful pond. It's really been too thick. You can't, 
reach the deeper water, too weedy. We're in a safe spot because we're away from traffic roads, and even if you fall in, you can stand up, so we don't have a lot of deep water and so on. So when you pick a good fishing spot, you try to find a spot where it's fairly dry. So where we're standing here is ideal because the grass is short, and a spot where the water's pretty deep. So already we've got about a foot to two feet of water, and if we cast our baits out, you can see that we've got lots of things that attract fish here. We have open water pockets, even though there's a lot of weeds here. So the fish are attracted to the weeds because there's food for them there. We can even try fishing close to the tree because the tree provides shade. So this would be an excellent spot to fish here and also on the other side. Other good spots to fish is where there's man-made structure that goes into the water. It could be bridge abutments, it could be somebody's dock, or it could be a fishing pier that sticks out onto the water. So those are all pretty safe spots. If the water was a little bit deeper, I would suggest that you wear some kind of a flotation device. So I'm wearing a collar, you can wear a little pouch. You don't have to wear literally a life jacket. For little kids, it's good to wear life jackets, but when you get your age, no problem. You can have a lot of this nice PFDs, they're called. So they're not in your way, and even if it gets hot, you can still have fun. So you know what? We can start fishing, it's a good spot.